we're going to talk about one of my ways of doing dry fire grip practice. So this is an important skill because we need to be able to hold a firearm on target, whether that be a rifle or a pistol. We need to be able to hold it on target and be able to hold it on it with a, a decent amount of uh, we need to hold it still while we're going through the function of pulling the trigger without disturbing that sight picture so um, <clears throat> one of the biggest things is that people trying to stabilize and that comes from you know a lot of things we're activating a lot of things we're activating wrists forearms we're activating elbow uh, not elbows but uh, shoulders and uh, depending on the weapon system that you're actually employing and that you're actually going to practice with, this can actually be quite a strain on the shoulder. So I would just uh, caution you if you're feeling pain or something, whether it be in the wrist, fingers, you know, whatever, shoulders especially, just stop. Give yourself a rest if you are dedicated to doing this. Number one, contact. I, I would try to talk to your doctor. I know I'm going to sound like a Viagra commercial, but contact your doctor to see if this is right for you. But um, uh, with all that said, uh, basically we're going to be going through isometrics and uh, holding, holding the firearm and you can do it in a kneeling position, whatever positions you're trying to practice, you know, going around uh, holding on a barrier because this can be very unstable, holding with one hand or something like that. Uh, just practicing an isometric. So isometric is just holding something, holding a certain weight under tension and um, I personally would go with the heaviest firearm that you have. <clears throat> and this is not it, but it's the current firearm that I'm working with. But uh, this one, not the heaviest one. I have a PTR-91 that's pretty heavy. Add some sights on that and, uh, and some jingle bells here and there. And you can rack up weight pretty quickly as with a lot of ARs these days. So anyways, I recommend going with the heaviest one that you have if you train harder. Bleed in practice, bleed less in real life, right? So that's the way I do it. Try to lift heavy, but uh, starting out, just see where you're at with whatever your carry system is. Uh, that's my recommendation. Now, why are we going to work on isometrics, not just uh, <clears throat> actually just going to the range or whatever? Well, in between the range, we got to do dry fire practice. And one of those things is we need to basically build ourselves up to the point where we're actually able to perform on the range. So what that means is, uh, we need to actually work on our strength. We need to work on our skills. And the key to both of those is we're not exhausting them to the point that when we get to the live fire range that we're exhausted. Uh, <clears throat> physically, uh, emotionally, mentally. Because uh, here's the thing. When we're practicing this kind of physical discipline, we're working on our brains a lot. So this can have a mental and an emotional toll. Uh, so we need to be sure that we're taking a break and we're not exhausting ourselves like people that want to do 10 hours of dry fire practice consecutively without a break. It, it Just extremism. We need to make sure that we're being responsible with our bodies and our minds in order to actually build those skills. So, uh, rant aside, and in my, in my opinion, isometrics is one of the best ways to uh, do this. Of course, uh, we're going to talk about the how, but I, I think that it's a good way to basically <clears throat> Build position, uh, build build the muscles that we uh, need in order to hold in a certain position. Whether that just be a static uh, precision shooting from a standing position, uh, not necessarily prone because you can just rest your magazine on the deck and uh, or ground floor, whatever, and you can basically just hold there. That's not what this is helping. This is helping for shooters that uh, are actually trying to advance, whether in competition or for you know, officers, military contractors, anybody that actually carries a gun for a living. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, security personnel. But it also get, makes your body more familiar with those positions. It makes it to where getting into those unconventional positions even uh, can be fine. Because it's kind of awkward to lean around a, uh, around a corner where you're basically bouncing on one leg. So, holding that in an isometric manner uh, can actually help build those specific muscles. Now, of course, isometrics is only going to do so much. You actually do have to run through the motion of going in and getting out. That requires different muscles as well, but we're building the muscles to improve that position to make it to where it, we're going to get more stable. So, 
Now let's go ahead and talk about the how. So, first things first, let's go ahead and start with a pistol. The pistol is going to be the most difficult firearm to basically master, right? So, for, for this example, we're just going to have the natural two-handed grip and I'm going to pick a very tiny piece on the wall. It's going to be a dot about that big from about 10 feet. And you can start out with something big if you're a shaky person and then try to work yourself down. So I'm just going to get a good sight picture on that and you got to understand that you are going to move around a bit. That's natural. With, uh, with your heartbeat, <clears throat> With your heartbeat, you're going to get uh, some fluctuation and stuff. It's going to be almost impossible to have perfectly st a perfectly still body. And here's the thing: you need to a you need to get establish your good sight picture and be okay with a little bit of movement. And when you get that sight picture, you, my recommendation for a pistol is to squeeze as hard, squeeze as hard as you can to where uh, basically you'll probably start shaking. I'm shaking a little bit, but I'm squeezing, and I'm being sure to go through all of my fingers, especially on this hand, and activating every single finger, like I'm trying to crush this grip with all my strength. Uh, and that's going to the middle finger, ring finger, uh, pinky finger, even the thumb, and pushing the trigger finger into the frame, going through one at a time and activating full strength, and I'm getting a little bit of shakes. What this is doing is basically you're working your wrist and the tendons, the muscles in your hand. You need to be able to vice your grip. You need to be able to do that. And also, what you need to do is go ahead and have uh, your support hand pulling in into, uh, pulling into the gun and also squeezing it. Like you're trying to destroy this grip, like crush it like a tin can. Uh, that's that's what I would be doing and doing your push and your pull. So basically you'd just be doing something like that. And try doing that for about 10 seconds or a 10 Mississippi count, then resting for, you know, 30 seconds or a minute or whatever and trying to do little stretches because when you're doing this, you're going to be activating your shoulders. You're going to be working a lot on your hands. Most people are not doing this when they're shooting. They're not gripping the gun as hard as they can. This is essential for good recoil control. So, you need to activate that full grip. So, that's that's going to be very essential and just holding it in position. So, also, even if you're practicing just holding uh, it on one hand, you need to get that full grip and each finger needs to be applying 100% strength and you're squeezing it like you're trying to destroy it and you can see I'm shaking a good amount. Well, some people would say that's not really necessary. It's one part. We're working on the grip and holding it in the in the shoulders. You can do that. And you can do that without the grip cuz if you're wanting to rest the grip, like say you're doing 10 to 30 seconds or whatever, just holding it on target like this, then and your shoulder is uh, doing okay, then I would just hold the shoulder and get it, just relax your fingers enough to where you're not really shaking. And just hold in position as much as you can on that tiny target. The biggest thing is holding that sight picture on target for as long as you can while you're doing all this. This is going to improve those muscles. And this isometric tension can be very beneficial to you. So if you want to step up the game, my recommendation is once you get more advanced, once you get more advanced, then go ahead and put a rifle sling on there and see how long you can hold that. Start basically near your hand and you can do two handed even, no big deal. And it might try to sway a little bit, It's you're trying to control it under tension. And the further out it is, the better. So try to keep your front sight holding it on because you don't want to necessarily drop your weapon, but you should be okay if it does hit the ground. So there we go. So anyways, that's, that's for the pistol. 
and that's that's a more advanced one basically adding weight that's going to add a lot of strength to your shoulders and it's going to work on your forearms a bit so improving your strength there that's essential so the next thing is your rifle so obviously you probably you probably want to work uh, with a sling so when you go to rest you can just let it go do some movements some stretches and I'll do a separate video on the actual stretches for dry fire practice but anyways during your rest period you want to do little stretches and stuff like that on your hands and you know moving your shoulders around not necessarily holding it in a position like trying to stretch out your joints but I just recommend you know good movement uh, counter to what the activation uh, stretching out the muscle I guess you could say by uh, doing a counter movement just in a pumping motion so just back and forth like this so anyways moving on to the rifle for the rifle we'll just demonstrate regular standing and basically you get into your position you lean into uh, your your rifle and you just find a tiny little spot and for me I'm going to use the my little donut of death in my sight here to kind of center on something and keep it perfectly in the center of the donut now once I establish that sight picture I'm going to do just like I did with the pistol where I'm using this hand to pull in to my shoulder and I'm going to use this hand as well to pull into the shoulder. Now that's counter to what a lot of people have been told. A lot of people are told to relax this hand. No. This has added strength to hold it into your shoulder and, and keep it on target. So uh, at least that's my experience is both, both hands can work because what's the point of having a point of contact if it's just there cosmetically? If it's there cosmetically, whatever. That's, that's up to you, but for me, I use both hands to pull on tar uh, pull the rifle into the shoulder and hold it on target. So, and then I just hold right there. So, <clears throat> that's as simple as it is. And of course, if you're wanting to add weight, uh, then strap on the weight, whether that be with a rifle or actual weights. But again, hold it for a certain amount of time to where you're just now we'll, I, I guess now we're kind of in the understanding when to stop and how to set our limits this is very important so here's the thing I don't believe in being tired uh, the next day after a workout it's not actually necessary I have not actually had a problem with being able to build good muscle fast um, when I'm able to go to the gym every day technically but I don't do the gym <laughs> so uh, I do my own home workouts but uh, I don't like the idea of feeling tired the next day it works on you physically and mentally and you got a lot of neurological healing to do uh, so you got um, you got muscles that need to heal and the uh, the nerves nervous system that needs to heal from it as well and I don't believe in being tired every day so uh, my recommendation is um, that you don't burn yourself out you don't treat this like it should be a workout you treat it as in um, for me it can be kind of like a it, it would be a workout but for you I wouldn't treat it like a traditional workout where you're basically burnt out the next day is what I'm trying to say kind of I, I would encourage you to adopt my philosophy on this where basically the next day you feel like you could just do it all over again uh, and then step it up a little bit so all you're doing is getting to a point where you're actually starting to feel tired or you're starting to feel a burn or a strain once you start feeling that burn go ahead and give it a rest now if you actually have a timer and you want to put like your your phone down uh, on the timer setting and it's at like you know 25 seconds and you start feeling tension and you start feeling a burn go ahead and try to put it at uh, you know 30 seconds 40 uh, seconds 45 seconds if you want to push it just a little bit then that's fine but I if you're under 30 seconds I wouldn't be trying to double that and uh, go to a minute but you know that everybody can do what they wish but I recommend you know I would recommend about five and five to ten minutes at first of doing this where basically 
you give yourself 15 seconds or 30 seconds, say you can go for 30 seconds and you get to the point where you need to stop. I'd recommend taking a minute. And um, with that, I would recommend going about 10, 15, 20 minutes doing this and that's pretty much it for the day. Uh, unless you want to do it later in the day, but you should never be completely tired um, at the end of one of these little training sessions, I guess you could say this dry practice training session, because here's the thing, you should be able to do this every day and you should be able to do it just before a competition or after or whatever and it shouldn't be something that's so detrimental to you the next day. It's just like uh, being able to work out. You should be able to use your body to its full potential every day um, and still make some kind of growth. And this is absolutely um, doable. You, you'd be surprised how fast you can grow if you adopt this method where you're able to do it every day and you're not doing it like um, once a week or whatever because you're burning your shoulders out or destroying them trying to... Uh, um, beat some kind of record, uh, some imaginary record you have in your head. Your body's going to do what it wants to do, and if it's done, it's done. So, anyways, with all that said, I know this has been a long-winded video, but I wanted to pass on this information because I think it's actually pretty important uh, that people understand this. So, anyways, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think, and uh, if you have any other recommendations for uh, building grip. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite ways to do it. So, Anyways, uh, thanks a lot for watching, and you guys have a good one.